23rd August 2023 was the day when India created history by successfully soft landing near to the moon's south pole and becoming the first country to achieve this feat. Four different scientific instruments, namely CHAST, RAMBA, ILSA and LRA deployed on the land of Vikram, helped to collect important data about the moon's surface, while rover Pragyan had two instruments, namely LIBS and APXS, to study composition of the moon's surface. Even though the mission life for both Land of Vikram and Rova Pragyan was just one lunar day and Chandrayaan 3 mission is already a success, the one question that makes few curious and the others anxious is why the lander and rover could not wake up at the onset of lunar day. Let's find out in this video. I am Abhishek and welcome to Revolutionary Engineering. Before we dive into the heart of the matter, let's understand the lunar night. The Moon experiences extreme temperature variations, with temperature dropping to as low as minus 180 degrees Celsius during night that lasts for about 14 Earth days. The land of Vikram and rover Pragyan face the ultimate test of lunar night without any heaters. To understand this lunar challenge, it's important to get back to the basics and see how the heat would be lost by lander and rover. For heat transfer to happen from any body, Conduction, convection and radiation are the only three modes of heat transfer. The possibility of convection on Moon is ruled out as it relies on the movement of fluids. But on Moon, there is no atmosphere like Earth to enable transfer of heat in this way. In conduction, heat is transferred through a material or between materials due to direct contact. The rate of heat conduction depends on the temperature difference between the regions, the cross-sectional area through which the heat flows, the length of the material and its thermal conductivity. CHAST, that was one of the scientific instruments on lander, gave an idea about the thermal conductivity of Moon's surface. It measured the temperature of the lunar topsoil to understand its thermal behavior. See how the temperature varies with depth as provided by CHAST payload. Notice how the temperature on Moon's surface at 60 degrees Celsius becomes minus 10 degrees at just 80 millimeters below the surface. This indicates a low thermal conductivity. And therefore, the conduction of heat from the bodies of lander and rover to the moon's surface can also be taken to be quite low. Now the spotlight turns to radiation that is also the only crucial player in lunar heat transfer. Even in extreme cold, objects emit infrared radiations based on their temperature. So the lander and rover would always be at a higher temperature than outer space. So most of the heat from them would be lost through radiation into the space and some of it also to the lunar surface. Based on the data from the past moon missions, for any spacecraft to survive lunar night, it needs to have three important things in place. Number one is a heating source to keep it warm. Number two is a well-engineered insulation to cut or reduce the heat transfer to a bare minimum level. And number three is a cryo-suitable electronics that can handle fatigue from thermal cycling arising from temperature falling and rising to insane levels during lunar nights and days, falling to as low as minus 200 degrees Celsius near to the South Pole where Vikram has landed and rising up to 100 degrees or even higher during lunar days. We'll explore each of them one by one. Let's start with a heat source. One of the most common heat sources used for space missions is Radioisotope Heating Unit or RHU. It generates thermal power from the natural radioactive decay of a small pallet of plutonium dioxide, which consists mostly of plutonium-238, a radioactive material. It generates about 1 watt of power, and this heat can be transferred directly to spacecraft structures, systems and instruments. Apollo 11 used such a unit for its seismometer in 1969 mission. ISRO did not use any such heater on board Chandrayaan-3. But is there any way to survive without a radioisotope unit? We'll come back with another interesting but lesser known way to keep lander and rover warm. But before that, let's first see the most important thing that is indispensable for any lander to wake up from the lunar night. And that is very high degree of insulation. Multilayer insulation or MLI is a technique often used on spacecraft and cryogenics. It consists of thermal insulation composed of multiple layers of thin sheets. Their main purpose is to reduce heat loss from radiation. MLI gives satellite the appearance of being covered with gold foil, which is just because of the effect of amber-colored Kapton layer deposited over what is called silver aluminized mylar, or simply polymer films coated with a thin layer of metal, usually aluminium. 
When MLI is wrapped around spacecraft components that need to be insulated, it radiates back the portion of the heat that the components emit. And in this way, the radiation losses from the surface can be reduced. By adding the layers of insulation, the radiation loss can be further reduced with each layer kept as close to the other as possible with almost no thermal contact between the layers. But MLI technique is very common for the spacecrafts and is deployed for almost all space missions where the temperatures are extremely low. Also, there is a trade-off between the number of layers of insulation to prevent heat loss and the weight and space occupied by this insulation. So the insulation too has its limitation but is certainly needed for such missions. Now comes the most important thing for which all the heat sources and insulation technologies are needed and that is electronics. If electronic fails, nothing would work. But regular electronic components at extremely low temperatures do not behave in as much the same way as when they are operating at normal temperatures. For example, if we see this document from NASA, it mentions challenges like the increase or decrease in threshold or breakdown voltages at cryo temperatures. A temperature controlled warm electronics box, which is the rover's body containing battery, electronics and other components, has been used by moon missions to survive lunar night but it severely impacts size, weight, power, and cost. As I already pointed out earlier that insulation requires physical space and adds weight to launches, two things that are costly premium on any space mission. And therefore, cost-effective and reliable future moon missions need extreme cool temperature electronics. In fact, dual access controller for use in extreme environments or in short DASI has been developed under the NASA Small Business Innovation Research Program. DASI is a robotic controller that's capable of functioning at temperatures as cold as minus 180 degrees Celsius and as warm as 100 degrees. Alongside electronics, there's another component that needs to withstand the freezing cold on Moon and that is battery. You see, this is an image showing monthly and annual lunar surface temperature variations at various latitudes. It indicates the freezing point of lithium-ion battery to be 200 Kelvin or minus 73 degrees Celsius but actually it stops to function much above that temperature. While if you see the lunar night, it crosses the 100 Kelvin or minus 173 degrees mark. Recent research however shows that lithium-ion batteries can be safely frozen and thawed, that is reheated again without much performance degradation. Using battery's own charge combined with insulation around it to keep it warm is a viable idea, but this would again require a robust battery management system or BMS in place and this BMS should be operable at extremely cold temperatures. Therefore, NASA has proposed lunar power hibernation as the survival strategy wherein the success depends on cryotolerant lithium-ion batteries, cryotolerant electronics, and cryo-operable electronics. Cryotolerant simply means that which passively withstands thermal environment down to 50 Kelvin or minus 223 degrees Celsius without damage. Such electronic components can cease to operate when the temperature dips to a certain level but again recover when the temperature is raised, while cryo-operable electronics not only withstands the extreme cold, but also must start up and operate at this extremely low temperature as soon as the lunar day begins. So these three things along with well-engineered insulation are absolutely necessary to survive the lunar night. Chandrayaan 3's lander and rover could not wake up at the onset of lunar day, probably due to one or more of these things missing. But cryo-electronics is still evolving until the time it becomes cost-effective norm for future missions, there is another way that can be used to reliably keep lander warm with no need of any of the above stated things, not even batteries. You are probably familiar with it, but it has never been used for the purpose of keeping lander warm. Yes, you guessed it right. A small portion of oxidizer from the lander's propulsion system could be used for the oxidation of metal to produce both heat and power from this exothermic reaction to warm the lander. A company called Maston has developed and tested pretty much a similar system. It produces significantly more heat, approximately 1900 watt hours per kg, and that's more than seven times lighter than an equivalent battery. It's autonomous and operates when temperature falls below a specified threshold. But even with any robust system, space is quite an unexpected place. Survival of any spacecraft during the lunar night is a remarkable test of engineering and innovation. That's all from my side. But if you got something of value from this video, I highly recommend you to subscribe to my channel so that you don't miss out on innovations and engineering that matter. Thanks for watching.